Alright guys, how's it going? I thought today, I just bit my tongue, fucking hell man. <laughs> Alright guys, how's it going? So I thought today, I would take a look at an add-on that you might not necessarily need. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't hold any value. It's just a very specific add-on and it's called Mesh Maze. And it just received an update for Blender 2.81 literally two days ago, so thank you to the developer for bringing it up to date. And it pretty much does exactly what you think it's going to do, it turns a mesh to a maze. Now one thing you need to do is download the entire zip folder, put it in your add-ons folder, then install the zip folder via preferences. So we'll quickly jump into Blender and we'll take a quick look. So in traditional fashion, we'll delete the cube, I'll press Shift and A and I'll add in a plane. I'll then come to the modifier tab and I'll add in a quick subdivision surface. Now I'll make it simple and I'll keep it 5 in the viewport and I'll hit apply. Now just to check out the wireframe I'll press Z and we have something like this. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to quickly change the mat cap to something a bit more tangible. And I'll press tab to jump into edit mode. And I'll select the faces and I'll make sure I have all the faces selected. So the next thing I need to do here is if I come up to Mesh, you can see here, Maze Mesh Selection. Now if you press F3 on the keyboard, you can search for it, but we'll just use this method. And it makes a big mess. But don't worry about that, if we come down to the dialog box, the main thing that's contributing to this is the width. So if we come down to Path Parameters, and we change the width down to something like 0 0.02, we now have a maze. Wicked! <laughs> Pretty handy. I don't know why you would use this, but, you never know. Now you can change the random seed and that kind of changes some of the direction. And braiding, the best way I can describe it, if you think of a wall hitting a T-junction, if you change the braid, it'll slightly move some of the um, positions about. So keep that in mind. And we have a few basic parameters. We can do something like an extrude, so we can actually extrude it up or down. Pretty cool. And if we hit advanced options, and you can see here we now have a thickness, so we can actually change the thickness of the walls. Now depending on the size of your topology, this obviously plays a factor. We get this kind of random distribution of the thickness of the wall. But I'll take that off, I'll make that zero again, and we'll just go with the basic mesh. Pretty cool, let's try one more object and let's try and jazz it up a little bit. Now we'll try and make something a little bit different this time, we'll press Shift and A, and let's add in something like an Icosphere. We'll make it a subdivision of 4, and I'll tab into edit mode. I'll make sure I select all the faces, I'll come to mesh, maze mesh selection, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to drop the width down to 0 0.01. Let me untick a few of these options here. And I'm going to extrude it out. Now, if I change the thickness in the outset of the thickness, so I'll tick outset, you can start to see it kind of acts like a bevel. So I can actually change the thickness here and it'll give you a better view. See it beveling in and out? And we get this kind of really nice shape that would be kind of difficult to model. I'll quickly jump into object mode and let's take a look at what we're getting here. Now like I said, it's not one of these applications you're going to use all the time, but it does have some use cases. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, I've got a few mates now, you know what to do. Peace.